Good morning everybody and welcome to the part 2 of getting started with glue PySpark for beginners right this is essentially part 2 the first part as i said we essentially saw a video what aws glue is all about and then in the second part i said the first few videos i'll be refreshing your memory on spark PySpark basically so let's get started this is a refreshing your memory on the syntax and 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 and, and, and some of the methods right in PySpark because when we do ETL work on AWS Glue, when we write complex code for cleaning and all that stuff, we will be converting uh, the Glue dynamic frame to uh, a Spark frame, perform certain operation, then convert back into a dynamic frame. So hence, learning the basics is really important. So let's get started. So again, this entire notebook shall be available for you uh, in case, uh, you know, if you want to refer it, right? So all, all, everything should be there. And I guess hopefully you should be able to see my entire screen. Uh, let me adjust this a little bit. Want to make sure where exactly is the point. Okay, so this is a good point, I guess. On the first line, on the first block over here, I'm going to install PySpark. So here I'm installing PySpark in my Jupyter notebook. And here I get a message saying the requirements already exist, as you can see. On the second block from PySpark.SQL, I'm going to import Spark session. And here I'm creating a very simple Spark session. Usually when you're working with Glue, uh, will be, um, you know, uh, I'll, I'll show you again, this is just refreshing a memory on PySpark, right? There are certain syntax that I will emphasize that you need to remember. So first here, uh, I'm gonna create a Spark instance. So the first syntax that I wanna highlight is the head. So once you have a Spark data frame, which is here you can see, Ideally, uh, you know, in, 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 in AWS Glue, right, when we write ETL jobs, you will read the, the data from S3 or you will read the data from a catalog or from a JDBC URL. Those would be a Glue data frame object and we are going to convert that into a Spark and then you can use all these commands. So the first command that is important is the head, which will show you the first two item in the data frame object. Then the next one, uh, again, this is just a, a, another way how to create a Spark data frame. Here I have a list of tuples. Uh, you can also create a Spark data frame with a list of tuples. Just wanted to um, explain that. The next important command that you need to remember is collect. Collect will essentially give you all the data. How you know? Just to uh, see, you know, if you want to see what the data looks like, what are the columns, what is the value, you can use a collect. You can also use the word take that also works um, the same way. We have a something called schema, print schema. This will essentially print the schema for the data frame object. Here you can see string, 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 and whether it's nullable or not. So again, uh, this is an important command that you need to remember. Ideally, you wanna know the print, uh, the print schema, take, collect, head, and uh, that's it. Uh, you can also run D types, which will essentially try to print you the data types. For example, say T is a string, but I usually tend to uh, use print schema much often. Uh, I only use like two commands: that is, print schema uh, or either head or or, or 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 collect. You know, so these are some of the one that I use uh, uh, on more a more often basis, right? You also have something called show, which will show you the data frame object. Okay, so again, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, over here, we can select a column from a data frame. Here I'm saying in the data frame, I'm using the word select and I'm selecting the column city. If you wanna select multiple columns, you can provide it as an array, as you can see over here. I'll try to zoom in. So you can pass multiple arguments and then you can say dot show, dot head, dot take, dot collect or dot print schema, they all work the same. Filtering data becomes easy. You can use the word filter. Here I'm showing you a simple filter command. So which means I'm saying in my data frame, give me the data where the city is equal to Paris. So here you can see this is the data frame where the city is equal to Paris. You can also perform multiple AND operation. For example, I can say filter where city is equal to Paris and where food is uh, where the type is food. So here I'm providing multiple condition and observe how I'm concatenating the filter command. Right, this is important. Again, we ba based upon the ETL um, job, you might want to filter data. Right, so again, uh, an important command that we need to uh, remember: filter. Over here is some more complex filter. For example, hey, 
give me the data frame where city is Paris and and observe here I'm using the word uh, ampersand which represents an and here I'm using dot filter these both method works fine here I'm saying dot type is equal to food again the same thing but a different way to write this both the syntax are uh, valid in PySpark over here we are doing certain more so I'm saying okay in the data frame give me the data where city is Paris and price is greater than 18 and just select the city column uh, for me so this is basically just selecting the city column again this is also valid right and here we are using order by so if you want to order your result you can use the word order by and you can provide the column name and uh, how you want to order it ascending descending etc etc so let's read this statement together give me the data frame where the price is less than 20 and order the result um, by price in the ascending order and select only the price column so and then I'm using the show which means show me the data frame okay so hopefully this was uh, clear right similarly here we are saying give me the data frame where the price is less than 20 and sort the result in the ascending order on a column called price and select the price column and show it to me right they both are valid they both are um, you know if you can see here they both um, again does the same same job right now now we are coming to the manipulation how to manipulate columns I'm not gonna cover this part because usually this is pretty hardly you're gonna use this what you are gonna use I'll show you that part because I know what is more important here right so I would love to cover uh, the UDF how to apply a custom transformation so let me see where that particular code uh, is okay this one a lot of time you want to apply a function right in pandas we say dot apply right but uh, things are slightly different here right so for example let's say you want to extract date right you want to parse the date you want to extract your month day all that stuff right so again here is a simple example i'm saying from PySpark sql function import udf i defined a function called add three it takes a uh, variable called x and the job is to return the value multiplied by three again i'm specifying that this is gonna return an integer now see how i'm applying it i'm saying df uh, that is a data frame dot select so i'm gonna select the data frame right now in that data frame observe i am essentially applying a function called add three i'm passing it i'm passing the basically the column called salary i'm selecting that column as alias so i'm just giving it my own name and then i'm doing a show so now with this UDF you can apply custom functions uh, to your uh, data frame object and then again do transformation this is something that will be very heavily heavily used but I'll also show you the group by command um, if needed right uh, according to me I don't think you will need group by to be honest but it's good to know right so I'm assuming here so here we, we are saying that okay group by department again this is the data frame object how it looks like we are saying group everything by department and then essentially perform a sum on salary i want to see for each department how much i am spending right so here you can see we grouped and then we summed on the salary and um, uh, we are uh, again printing the data frame object similar similarly right we are doing state dot count right so you can also you know count items right again i don't think much you will be requiring group by so again not much important uh, then this might be important again some of the people really love pandas so i wanted to show how to convert PySpark to pandas and pandas to PySpark. so let's let's see that so again this is a PySpark data frame right um, i'm not sure why you want to convert it into a pandas you can do everything in PySpark, but if you do want to do that you can use the word to pandas and now this data frame gets converted into a pandas uh, assuming now you want to convert the pandas back to the PySpark, you can say from PySpark SQL import SQL context. On this line, I'm essentially creating a SQL uh, SQL context. Here you can see I'm passing the Spark instance, and then here I'm creating a data frame object. So SQL CTX dot create data frame. I'm passing in the pandas data frame, and I'm doing dot show. And now my pandas data frame is essentially created into a Spark data frame. I'm using the word create data frame here. Uh, removing null values, this is one way to do that. There are other ways as well, but uh, let me show you. Here I have a simple data frame where you can see this value and this value is none. 
So the way I, I, I essentially tackle this is by using a UDF. So here you can see I'm saying, uh, I'm, I'm defining a function called remove. And if basically the value is an empty uh, quotes, I'm returning a one, else I'm returning a zero. Now what I'll do is I'll apply this function. So here, as you can see, I said UDF apply the function and this is gonna return an integer data type. And over here is where I, uh, over, over here where I am essentially applying it, right? So here I'm saying with column category, I'm applying, uh, as you can see, the, the UDF, and then I'm essentially applying it on the first name. So what, what I essentially got, wherever the name, if you observe here, the name is not there. It essentially made a one. And now you can use the filter command and essentially filter the data frame uh, where the column is equal to equal to zero. That's again a great way to do that. So now, again, a very simple way, uh, write your custom UDF, where whatever your conditions are, write, it, write those conditions in an if statement, uh, create a new column, whatever you wanna call flag, category. And once you get that, then essentially uh, filter your data frame on this particular column, say, give me everything where the value is zero, right? So I'm gonna get this and this, right? And then if needed, uh, you can only select the columns that you required for your project. So I hope this will be uh, a good walkthrough for you on the PySpark. This is all you need to know in terms of PySpark. So before we get started on Glue console and we you know create crawlers, we, we do PySpark and all these stuff, uh, this will serve as a help because when we use these commands, it shouldn't be coming as a surprise. So I hope this will help you. The entire notebook exercise is there on my GitHub section. I'll leave the resources in the description. If you need, may please check that out. And again, this is the part two. And in the part three, um, we'll try to do some nice labs on AWS now, right? We'll understand how to read uh, data from uh, in Glue, uh, for, for example, dynamic frame, right? So from, so what are the various options, right? You can read from S3, from Catalog, from JDBC, right? And then we'll try to convert this into a Spark data frame. That is something gonna be in the next uh, video that is gonna be part three. Thank you so much. If you have questions, you may post your question in the comments. With that being said, keep smiling. I see you guys in the part number three.